All right, hope everybody's doing okay. We are back at the Ford Escape. 277, almost 78,000 miles on the clock. If you haven't been following the videos, uh, we repaired a lot of leaks with this, and this is kind of a series of whether you should keep an old car or not. This is a 2001, so it is 30 years old. Is that right? No. 20. It's about 22 years old. Had to think about that for a second. So we went to go get, we had a check engine light pop on. It's been on and off. So we don't know what the issue is. We went to go grab a scanner and Murphy's Law. We can't find it. We couldn't find either scanner that we have. So we went out down to the local Harbor Freight and picked up this Zurich, I think it's pronounced, uh, OBD2 Bluetooth scanner. So it's just like a little Bluetooth module here. It says it can read live data, access to bulletins and all that. Um, there's an app store. And there's no cables and you can use your cell phone. So we're gonna get it plugged in and see if this thing can read anything. And here it is, it's, it's tiny, not much to it. So we're gonna plug it into the OBD2 port and see what happens. All right, we plug the Bluetooth scanner in and open the app. It'll go through a few steps to show you how to hook it up. So turn on the Bluetooth on your phone or device. This can be a show me where and it will basically show you where your OBD2 port is. Um, let's do it by year, make, and model here. Let's see. We are a Ford. It's a 2001. Now, this one is located right by the driver's side uh, left foot, the kick panel there. Let's see how accurate this is. Wow, and it shows a picture. We're gonna go down there and look and compare this photo with this photo and see. Uh, that's pretty accurate, actually. So, if you look up in there, right there is the OBD2 thing, and then you got your little cable and your steering arm. Now look down at this photo. That looks exactly like that does right there. Let's get a better view there. See that, you got the little thing there. The fuse panels there, everything looks exactly the same. So good job on that. All right, let's continue on. All right, done. So we've located it. Mission on, let's continue. All right, searching for vehicle, or searching scan tool. So it is pairing. Sorry for the glare, it's very sunny out. And the reason why we're recording is we just wanna show you in real time how quick everything hooks up. Successfully paired, we're gonna continue. Everything should be coming up here. Yep, and that's our mileage. And it's showing 866 but on the dash is 865, so I'm sure it's over that five mark. Let's go ahead and just do an all network scan here. And this might take a while, so we're gonna go ahead and just stop the recording to save space and we'll come back once it's done. All right guys, on this screen, you're gonna get a whole host of information. Um, you got one code found. Now we did scan this before and erase the code and it came back, it was for the gas cap, saying the gas cap was malfunctioning, so we'll go check that out after this. But as you can see, you can get emission status and it's not ready. So let's see what the code says. Uh, engine incomplete. Let's uh, view all. OBD not ready. That was because we cleared the code. Um, let's go back. Let's go back. But if you look here, it shows common dashboard lights that pop up. Gives you your battery status, trans fluid temperature which I don't know if that's accurate, but we will come back and check and see if that increases. TSB and recalls. So, I mean, you can go into dealer recalls. It has all this information for free. Safety recalls. Um, let's look back on some other things. Upcoming maintenance items. Look at that. The Ford genuine part number and oil with estimated prices. 
I mean, you cannot beat this for the price. This this scanner is is crazy for the price. Uh, let's go to let's look at live data here. Record live data. Let's see what we can get. So we can get vehicle speed, RPM, coolant sensor, load, short term and long term. That's huge. That can help you diagnose a lot of problems with the vehicle. So yeah, this scanner for fifty nine bucks. I don't think you're gonna beat it, honestly. Uh, it's it's it looks good. Let's see. Let's go back into the report here. There we are. Um, and this is brand new. We're just learning how to use this thing. So uh, report history. So we'll go back. There it is. There's a lot of back buttons there. So yeah, so one code was found. Uh, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna take a look at this gas cap and see how it looks. All right, let's look at the condition of this gas cap here. And it is quite filthy in there. So yeah, if you look at the ceiling, now it was, it was a code for EVAP leak, small EVAP leak. Look at that ceiling surface in there and I can smell the fuel and that gasket surface has probably been chewed up by that dirt for many, many years. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this gas cap out here and we're gonna clean everything. And we're gonna take it for a ride and see if that code comes back we're or not. We're gonna find the um, old report in here. And we did notice the transmission fluid temperature is taken when you scan the vehicle with the scanner. And it doesn't update in real time, but it does take the current snapshot as soon as you connect it. These were the three codes that we found. And there it was, EVAP, fuel cap loose or off, inspect, tighten, or replace. You seen how dirty it was? And let's see if we got some details. I mean, this, is, this thing just gives so much information for the little price that it cost. Look at that, how much the cast cap cost. All right, as you can see, it looks much cleaner than it was before. We took the gas cap off here and removed the rubber. We washed everything with soap and water, cleaned this area with brake clean. Now we're gonna put it back on, clear the codes one more time, and then we're gonna go drive it for a while and see if this thing actually diagnosed this the proper way. Um, said it was a bad gas cap. We seen there was tons of corrosion and dirt on there. So a little cleanup and let's see if this thing saved us some big money. All right, we're in the monitors. We reset everything and obviously we have a complete, incomplete EGR system catalyst. EVAP is where we had the code O2 and heated O2. Oh, phone went off, sorry. And the completed sections are the misfires, fuel and Comprehensive component monitoring not supported is everything else. So we really need to get on this type of car, you're allowed to have one of these modules not on. So you can have one of these things um, not be complete. You can't have a check engine light, but one of them can be incomplete and you can still go get emissions done on this year. Uh, prior to 2000, like the 90s, I believe you can have two monitors that are incomplete but you cannot have a check engine light at any time. So we're just gonna run this car and wait for all these modules to click off and see if this thing helped us find what was wrong. All right, we went about one or two miles and got some fuel. We, we reset the odometer to zero and we're gonna go ahead and see what monitors we still have to do. And it's still the same exact all the way around. So we're gonna drive it for a little bit, see what happens. All right, just in that short little drive of about, let's see, we'll call it six miles, because we had a mile there and four and a half back, so we'll call it six miles. In six miles, we're only left with two of the systems incomplete. The catalyst, which we hope is good at still almost 300,000 miles, it's the original catalytic converter, and the EVAP system, that's what we had a code in originally. So we're gonna keep trucking along and hopefully we can get this emissions test done today. 
All right, guys, you see there we got 29 miles. Um, all the emissions components turned off except for the EVAP one. The original code that we had for the car was an EVAP gas code. But as you can see there, that's all that's left. I believe we can go get the emissions done, so that's what we're going to go do. We are going to try and see if it'll pass. All right, there we have it. The vehicle did pass the emissions test. 277 918 all right so our final thoughts on this scanner for 59.99 everything that you get with it the repair solutions the access to the tsbs the estimated price and part numbers on parts and items that you would need to repair um, detailed information on the repairs the location of the obd2 port with pictures no cable we really can't find anything wrong with this for a sub $100 Bluetooth um, car scanner. It is a little bit slow. It's not as fast as some scanners we use and we've used many scanners over the years. But for the home mechanic or even the entry level mechanic in a small shop, this thing would be amazing and could make you some serious money. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.